Welcome to Electron Line, and in this video, we're going to show you how to calculate, no, not how to calculate, but how to represent the reaction rate. And so, what do we mean by the reaction rate? It's the rate at which the reaction occurs. And it usually has to do with the concentration of the reactants and the products. And so, as the reactants are consumed, the less and less reactions there are, the slower and slower the reaction will take place. And as there is more and more products being formed, the slower the reaction will take place. So it starts out really fast and then it slows down. And the slope of that line, and here's my ruler here, again, the slope of that line, the steepness of that line, really represents how fast the reaction is taking place. And as you can see, as time goes by, because time goes to the right, as time goes by, the reaction becomes slower and slower and slower. As time goes by, the reaction becomes slower and slower and slower. So the reaction really is, represent, is represented by the slope of this line. And we'll show you in the next video or so how we really calculate that reaction rate by looking at the slope. So, continuing on here, if we talk about the reaction rate, by definition, it's the negative change in the concentration of the reactants. The concentration of reactants in terms of moles per liter, so that's molarity, and we divide that by the change in time. We use the Greek letter delta here to represent change, so it's the negative change in the reactants divided by the change in the time. Why the negative? Well, notice that the slope here is negative. If you remember from algebra, the y equals mx plus b, when the line goes this way, the slope is negative. When the line goes this way, the slope is positive. So you can see that if we look at the, the concentration of the reactants over time, the slope of that line is indeed negative. And since we can't talk about the negative reaction rate, we have to put a negative sign in front of it to make it make sense. So we simply make it the negative of that slope divided by the change in, in the time. Or actually, the negative of the slope is this, the change in the reactants divided by the change in time. So let's say we have a reaction where we have two reactants and one product, A plus B forms C. How do we express the rate of that reaction? Notice that we don't say reaction rate, we simply say rate, indicating that's the rate of the reaction. So we can look at the reactants, we can look at the products, you can see that you need one of these and one of these to make one of those, so in that case you can express the rate as being equal to negative, the change in the concentration of one of the reactants, let's say A, divided by the change in time. Or you can say that the rate is equal to the negative change in the concentration of the other reactant divided by the change in time. Notice since you need the same amount of reactants for A and for B, or from A and from B, then the rate can be expressed in either one and it'll be the same like that. You can also express the rate in terms of the products being produced. Here you see this dashed line here representing the concentration of the products. Notice that the positive slope here is equal to the negative slope there, so simply difference by a sign. And so you can also say that the rate of that reaction can be expressed as the positive change in the product, in this case C, divided by the change in time. So here we don't need a negative sign because we already know that the slope is positive. It's just that the numerically the slope is the same, it just, it just differs by a sign. But not always do you need just one of A and one of B to make one of C. For example, one atom of A plus one atom of B makes C, or one mo molecule of A plus one molecule of B makes one molecule of C, or in terms of moles. Sometimes we'll need more of one reactant than another. So how do we express the rate there? Well, if you need four times as much of this reactant compared to this reactant, this reactant will be consumed four times as fast. And so therefore, the rate needs to be expressed in terms of the concentration of this or the concentration of that. And since you need four times as many of these for the same rate of the reaction, then the rate will be expressed in terms of four times the concentration of this versus one time the concentration of this. Show you what that, what that means. So we can say that the rate of the second reaction can be expressed in terms of minus the change in the concentration of A with respect to time, or with respect to the change in time, I should say. And then here, in the case of B, we want to look at that reactant. There we, get, there we go that the rate is equal to minus four times the, ch the change in the concentration of B divided by the change in time. And then if you can see that there's three of the products being produced for every one reaction, then you can also indicate that the rate of that reaction can be expressed as a positive three times the change in the concentration of C divided by the change in the time. So you can see that's how we mathematically indicate the reaction rate 
either using the products or using the reactants. And of course, if you have uh, a situation where there's more of one reactant that you need compared to the other, you can see how you then change the way you represent the reaction rate. So now in the next video, we're actually going to take a look, closer look at the slope and how we can actually indicate graphically what the reaction rate is by looking at that slope, by taking maybe intervals over intervals of time, the amount of reactants that you have or the amount of products that you have to figure out how to come up with a way to express the reaction rate. So graphically, that's our next video.